Hey guys, great to have you here today. And I tell you, this is gonna be one of my favorite videos I've done in a while. Now, over the last couple of years, I've heard a lot of talk about how divots don't really matter. We can't tell a lot of, about a divot. Uh, a lot of teaching pros out there are saying, well, you know, they're not a good representation. I've seen players that didn't take a divot at all and hit a great shot, or players that take really deep divots and hit good shots. And I'm not saying that's not the case. I'm not saying that divots are absolutely 100% the only thing that matters, but I'm saying they're pretty daggone good feedback. I mean, when else in golf, I'm guessing that you don't have a camera crew with high speed cameras following you around here and your round of golf. When else do you get direct feedback on what happened at the most important part of the golf swing, which is when you hit the ball? Whatever your divot tells you, there's a ton of great information in there. So we're gonna go over today, how much is too much when you're talking about hitting to the right? Should my divot be pointing to the right or to the left? To hit a nice straight shot. And you'll actually be surprised to hit a straight shot, you don't want a straight divot. I'll go over that. So how much is too much? How much is not enough? How deep should my divots be? If they're too deep, what's that gonna cause me to do? If they're too shallow, what's that gonna hurt for me? And then we'll talk about the number one most common thing that I see, which is the lie angle of the club. When that toe gets too far down, how that can cause you to thin almost every single shot and how roughly 90% of the players that I see have that toe too far down. We're gonna go all that, over all that and more. And one of the best examples before we get started any farther in this, let's take a look at arguably the best player of all time playing the best golf of all time. This is Tiger Woods from the early 2000s. You take a look at this range session, this picture that I'm showing on the screen, look at those divots. Those are perfectly level with the ground, perfectly square. It looks like you took a razor blade, a scalpel, and just shaved the top layer of the turf off. Look how nice and clean and crisp those are. So if divots don't matter, how could it be possible that the greatest player of all time is making divots that look so much different than every other player's divots that you see? And how players you walk up and down the PGA Tour, their divots are looking very similar to the divots you're seeing there. Walk around the, the driving range at your local club, you're not gonna see very many of those divots. So this is all about the divots. We're gonna talk about how you can improve your divots, get direct feedback, and start playing better golf today. Let's go and get started. Okay, so let's start with one of the most interesting things that I see, which is the lie angle of the club and how that can affect not only the direction the ball goes, but also how cleanly you hit the golf ball. So let me grab my, I have my seven iron here. And what I'm gonna do is show you, I've marked with a black dot, I've marked the, the center of the sweet spot there. So ideally what I'd like to have happen is I wanna make contact with that golf ball right on that, that black dot. I would prefer, if I'm gonna miss it, for it to be a little bit higher. Typically, that's gonna launch a little higher, get you a little bit extra distance. If I go a little bit lower, I'm gonna to tend to thin the ball. It's gonna add some spin, I'm gonna lose some distance. So why does this matter when we're talking about the lie angle of the club? Well, one of the most common things I see is when players are coming into contact, and I'll show you why in a minute, that toe starts to go down. And if you notice that black dot, as I start to raise that toe, or I start to let that toe come down, Let's imagine I'm coming into the ball with my toe digging first. Look how much higher off the ground that black dot is. So it's no longer close to the surface. Now, if I have a tight lie, if I don't have a perfect lie, no way I'm making contact with the golf ball on that black dot. It's gonna be thin every single time because the center of gravity or the sweet spot of my club is now lifted off the turf. I could also go the same thing with heel down, but that's very rare. I don't see that very much. Now, it's also gonna affect the way your shots are flying. So here I have a little a device that just shows me where my face is pointing. Now, if I raise that and make the toe down again, look where my club is now pointing or the face is now pointing, it's pointing to the right. So if I'm hitting down the fairway and my toe starts to go toe down, now I'm gonna be going into the right side of the green. So a lot of players struggle with those blocks to the right. We struggle with those slices. And a lot of that is because that toe is coming down here. So a great way to know if you're doing this is to see if you're standing up in your swing. The most common thing that I see is players will come out of their posture, start to flip the club a little bit, and now all of a sudden when I do that, my toe, because my hands are coming up, my toe's digging down, I'm getting those thin shots, I'm getting those blocks to the right, and I'm not gonna get the solid strike that I want. What I want you to feel, if that sounds like that's something that you may be doing, is I want you to feel like in your downswing, you feel like your weight is coming back. As you open up, you're gonna be more toward your left heel. So instead of being on my toes and standing up and flipping, I'm gonna be more toward my heel 
and my toe is going to feel like it's almost lifting off the ground like that. I'm exaggerating there, but that's the sensation that I want you to have. Here, my weight's going toward the heel of the foot, all right? And that's going to allow that my hands to be lower, and it's going to allow me for a nice square, solid contact on this golf ball. Now, if I do this correctly, I'll try to go ahead and uh, show one here at contact. Now, I think one, this is one of the reasons that people give divots a bad rep. This is rough Bermuda grass. This is not gonna make a perfectly square divot no matter how good I hit this. This stuff is thick, it gets kind of tangled up, it's gnarly. It's also growing in this direction, so it's growing back into me. So typically it's not gonna make as clean a divot when I do this, but if we really pay attention, I'm gonna take a little extra deep divot here, and we'll still be able to tell something about whether or not our toe was up or down when we did this. Let's go ahead and try one out. There we go, so a nice straight shot, just a few feet right of the flag. And what I'll notice here is if I kind of tap down this divot, and if I just look at this, kind of clean out a few of those extra pieces of grass that got stuck on there, didn't quite get chopped off. What I'm gonna see here is this back line of my divots is pretty nice and square. I'll notice that the, the rough grass didn't quite come out perfectly square on this. It's not that dollar bill shaped divot like we would wanna see if we're hitting on Bermuda or something like that. But if I just look at, I came down and hit the golf ball, and then just right in front of the golf ball, what was my club doing as it interacted with the turf? I'll notice that's nice and square, and that's a really good sign that I wasn't toe down. I also hit that ball really solid, right on the middle of the sweet spot, so that's another sign that I wasn't toe down. I would have a tough time hitting that ball solid. Now, if you're doing this incorrectly, what you're gonna notice is, you're always gonna be wanting to put the ball in the fluffiest lie. You're gonna be kind of scooting it around here, and you're always gonna say, okay, let me get this ball perfectly as high up in the air as I can. And again, the reason that you want that fluffy lie is because when that toe comes down, it lifts the center of gravity off the ground, and now you're trying to cheat to get the ball up as high as you can. Also, if we flip a little bit, and we tend to not take a divot at all, then we're gonna to wanna to have that ball as high as we can. That way we can kind of flip not take a divot and still hit it solid. So that's the second thing I wanna talk about here. And we can see, actually before we move to that next piece, let's take a look at a few pictures of players' divots that are toe down. So what you'll notice is the outside of the divot is hit first. So the toe, because it's coming down, makes contact with the turf first, it starts to cut the divot, and then as the club continues down farther and farther, then the heel comes in and it starts to cut the divot. One of the mistakes that people see there a lot of times is they think that when they see the front edge of their divot pointing to the right like that or, or crooked like that, they think that their face was open and the face was actually pointed to the right. The face was pretty square, it's just that the toe was coming down in there first. So now let's talk about the depth of the divots. All right, so what happens if we're hitting it too thin? We already talked about you know, how a flip, we want it to really tee that ball up nice and fluffy on a lie. That way when the center of gravity still comes up off the ground, that we're gonna be able to hit it fairly solid. Now, when you get on those tight lies, you may know, I'm gonna give you a couple symptoms here and you can tell me if this is you. If you're on pretty short grass, a tight lie, and it makes you really uncomfortable, you feel like you're probably not gonna hit a very good shot, that's a good chance you're either flipping and kind of pushing, the, the, the club doesn't have enough forward shaft lanes, you're not really hitting down and through, or that could be a good case that your toe is down a little bit. If you tend to not really take very much of a divot so you get on that tight lie, you have to pick the ball perfectly clean. Again, you're probably standing up and flipping a little bit rather than having that forward shaft lean there. And if that's the case, if that's you, you're hitting these thin divots that really don't exist, what I want you to work on, and, and the reason you do need to work on this is because if you don't have a perfect lie, it makes it almost impossible to hit a good shot. If you have the right technique, you can hit a good shot from any lie. What I want you to work on here is what I call impact glide. And this is what all the pros are doing. Some people call it the flat spot through impact. We can call it whatever we want to, but here's what should be happening. I want my hands to work down really low as I'm coming into contact. So my hands are coming down lower, and you'll see from here, if I really exaggerate from this, if my hands got super, super low, my club is already on the, the ground here, and already touching the turf. Now, as, as the butt end of this club raises up, that club head is gonna glide across the turf. So you want that to be nice and flat. I want my club to be coming down with the, the, the turf, coming down as my hands turn back up, that club's gonna come in really level and glide across the turf. Now, if I'm flipping at the ball, 
if I'm feeling like I'm standing up and flipping, what's happening is my hands are never getting low. They're staying high and I'm pushing this club head down toward the turf and my club is more like a V. My club's coming down, hitting the ground and then coming back up again. I don't have that spot where it glides through the turf. Now that's a big problem because if I'm not having the club head level with the ground for a long period of time, I've only got that one point that I can hit the ball solid. Now if I have my club head gliding through the turf, I could hit either one of these golf balls and they'd still be fairly solid, pretty nice shots because my hands are coming low. As I rotate my body and come up on a round, my club head still keeps coming down. I could hit this ball at the beginning of my divot. I'd be coming down and getting a little deeper and deeper in the divot. I could hit this ball and it wouldn't have that much dirt between the club head and the golf ball. That's exactly what you saw with Tiger Woods when we showed those perfectly square, clean level divots. That's how he's doing this. So if this is something you're struggling with, go ahead and stand up, grab a club, and here's what I want you to practice. I still want you to hit down and through this golf ball, but I want you to feel like your legs go ahead and bend a little bit. Get a little bit of knee bend and let those start opening up. Get those hands lower, right? If I don't have any knee bend and I'm standing up, I'm high away from the ground, I, I can't get close to the ground, I have to flip. I want you to get some knee bend, get lower, and then as you come through the shot, feel like your butt into the club turns up and in. Now your club head is still gonna hit the ground. I'm still gonna be letting that club head brush the turf, but it's not gonna be digging. It's gonna be coming in nice and level. It's got that really clean, crisp sound to it when we do this correctly. So let me go ahead and try to hit a shot here. I already did a few practice swings here, and you'll see how my divots are fairly level. I'm not gonna have one divot chopping way down in the ground. If I hit 100 shots, I want all those to be fairly level, and I'll know I'm doing this uh, perfectly correct. All right, so we'll see on that one. Again, I made a divot. I went ahead and exaggerated and really tried to hit down on it, but you'll notice the divot isn't super deep. You can still see some roots popping up. You notice in these other divots too, the roots are still popping up there. If I was really chopping down on that, instead of my divot being four or five inches long, about the size of a dollar bill, they're always gonna be a little shorter in this thicker Bermuda grass. If you're on bent grass or really tight grass that's uh, wet outside, the divots may be a little bit bigger but we don't want them to be way deep to where they just cut right through the divots and you see raw dirt. You wanna see those, those uh, excuse me, cut right through the roots of the grass. I wanna see roots of the grass kind of sticking up and I know I'm doing that correctly. Now, if I'm getting too deep of a divot and I'm really chopping down, most all the time what I see is the players are coming too far in front. They're swinging over the top. Typically you have a slice. You're having that ball kind of curve from left to right and that's kind of chopping down on the ball. Now from there, what you would want to work on is coming a little bit more from the inside. So probably one of the biggest tips we talk about is what we call the compression line in the top speed golf system. And what that means is, if you look at my left ankle up to my left shoulder, with great golfers, even with short irons, that's gonna be basically straight up and down and go a little bit farther back until you get to driver. What I see a lot of players that are struggling coming over the top they're getting in front of the golf ball. Now my shoulder is all the way in front of my left ankle. That puts me in a position where there's no way I can swing anywhere and hit this golf ball except coming down over the top and getting that really steep divot. So if you're taking those steep divots, feel like your head is a little farther behind the golf ball. And as you rotate on through, feel like you're coming from the inside and coming a little bit more out to the right. That's really gonna help you to shallow out those divots. All right, so now let's talk about the direction. Which direction should my divot be moving? We've all talked, to, we've all heard before that if we wanna hit a draw, we gotta make sure our divot is going out to the right. Now that's partially true. If we wanna hit a big draw, that's the case. If we wanna hit a draw, we actually want a dead square divot or a pretty daggone close to being square divot. And here's the reason. If you imagine your swing like a giant hula hoop, the back swing is coming up and in the downswing, not only is my club moving down, but it's also moving out to the right. So it'd be kind of moving out this direction. Now, as I get to the bottom of that hula hoop, my club face would be dead square. My club direction would be dead square. Everything's going right toward the target. And then as I come past the bottom of my, my hula hoop or the bottom of my arc, now it's moving in and to the left. So anything on the downswing before the bottom of the arc or before the bottom of your divot, that's moving more to the right. So if you imagine that hula hoop again, the very bottom of that hula hoop is the bottom of your divot. You're hitting the ball before that. So what's happening when I'm hitting a draw, my club is still working down and out to the right. It's still going out to the right a little bit. I hit that ball 
and my club is still working on its way down to the bottom. So my club's moving a little out to the right, I make contact with the ball, and then it starts to square up. At, by the bottom of my divot, it's dead square, and then it starts to come back to the left. So if I'm trying to hit a little two, three, four yard draw, really not very much movement on it at all, I wanna see these divots to look pretty square. And that's basically what I was hitting in those shots that you saw earlier. So if I lay a stick down here, kind of showing the overall direction of these divots, you're gonna see those are pretty square to where my target was. That's that nice, small draw. Now, if I wanna get a little bit of a bigger draw, then I'm gonna have my divots pointing a little bit more to the right of that, really come a little bit more inside out, and that's gonna help me to hit a bigger draw. Let's go ahead and I'll hit one here and really try to hook this and we'll watch it on my flight scope so you can see the flight of that ball. But I'll really try to hook this here and let's see what the divot looks like. There we go, so that started toward the right side of the green and then drew back to the left side of the green. Now, if I look at that divot, I really chopped down on it, but that divot's going more in this direction. So I've really come, come inside out. Now, if you're trying to play that nice little draw, I don't want those divots going way out there to the right side of the green. That's too much. If you do this, what's gonna end up happening is it's gonna to struggle to be consistent. You're gonna hit some fantastic shots. You're gonna really compress them. That draw that just takes off and really rolls, gets a lot of roll out. Those are great, the one out of 10 that you really hit good. But if I do this a lot, what's gonna end up happening is if I don't quite hit it right, I'm gonna get a big block to the right. And if I do a little too much and I release that face, all of a sudden that snap hook comes in there and that ball really goes to the left. So I really don't want these big divots to the right. Same thing with divots to the left. If my divot starts going, you know, 15, 20 degrees to the left, if I hit a shot and I look at my divot and it's pointing over to the left edge of the green, that's gonna make it very difficult to hit a good shot. And the reason is my club is moving across the golf ball. So I have to open the face up the right amount. That adds loft, it adds more of a glancing blow. You're gonna lose some distance. So if you're losing distance right away, the first thing I would check see if your divots are going more toward the left side of the green. And that's gonna help you to really feel like you swing more out to the right, you're gonna pick up 10, 15 yards right away. All right guys, so let's recap and talk about at the end here, what is the perfect divot? Now, number one, my toe is not gonna to be down and it's not gonna be up. The sole of this club is gonna be perfectly flush with the ground and that's gonna make the leading edge of this divot really nice and clean cut and square. Now I have a picture on the screen that's from a divot that I hit with some good turf. I'm down grain, I'm on some tightly nipped turf and it was nice and soft so I could take a perfectly cut divot. So you'll see the leading edge of that is perfectly square. That's telling me that the sole of my club was coming in really nice and level. Number two, how deep was the divot? You'll notice on that same one, it's not a real deep U-shaped divot. So it didn't chop down and then come back up. I had that impact glide where my hands are going low to high and that club face is traveling with the ground. So you'll notice that's a pretty nice and level divot. You can see the bits of the roots kind of sticking up there, that's when you know you've really hit it perfect. Nice and square too. So the last piece we talked about there is that divot pointing to the right or to the left. Now I know you can't see my target in this one, but it's actually pointing really nice and straight, maybe even just slightly left of the target, which would be what I want for a straight shot. So again, anything to the right of the target is a bit too much of a hook, even a draw, or a bit too much of a draw, even a hook. Square to the target is a nice draw. A little left is a straight shot a lot left and I'm glancing across it and really getting a bit of a glancing blow, not really gonna get the distance I want. So if you can get your divots to look as close to these as possible, that would be fantastic. The last thing I'll leave you with here, the conditions matter. Today I'm hitting from really thick, kind of gnarly Bermuda here in Florida. You're not gonna typically have those perfectly clean cut dollar bill size divots, those aren't gonna happen. If it's really wet outside, you're gonna have a little bit of a thicker divot just cause your, your club's just gonna cut through the turf so much easier. If it's really dry and hard and baked outside, you're not gonna have as much of a divot. So take into condition what the, the turf is like. That's gonna affect the divot. So it's not one hard, fast rule that says every single divot has to be like a dollar bill. They will vary, but still pay attention to those details we talked about. You're gonna have so many more clues from the one thing that tells you what your contact was doing, which is your divot. Now, one of the things that I said was the most common in having incorrect divots is having that toe of the club really dig down. Now, we have something called the move in the top speed golf system. And what we talk about in the move is how to get that club to shallow out. Now, when that club shallows out, this club is coming down on an angle that is much easier 
to get the sole of the club flush with the ground and to start really compressing those golf balls. I'm gonna play a preview from one of the best videos from the move section. That's our tennis racket drill. Just go ahead and click the card that pops up on your screen or the link down below in the description. You'll get instant access to that video. You'll start shallowing out that club and really squaring up the face to get really, really good compression and get those clean divots we talked about today. Let's go ahead and get started. Good player problems. We're gonna talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down, as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked, about, worked on in the last video. As we start this downswing, what you'll see with, with basically all uh, of the, the top players is instead of coming kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body, again, coming down steep into the ball, and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it, the flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we want to have happening here, you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane. As I go to the top of the swing, I'm going to be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time,